Hello and welcome to this screencast in which I am going to introduce the idea of global minimum variance and develop it fully in subsequent videos. The concept of global minimum variance my friends is a pretty simple and intuitive concept to understand. It simply represents a fully invested portfolio with minimum volatility. In other words, what we are trying to do is to minimize the portfolio variance here. That's why I have written here minimize the portfolio variance. And on the right hand side of this thing, you see the familiar double summation formula uh, in which we have xi times xj times covariance between i and j, where xi and xj are portfolio weights for securities i and j respectively. Um, I'm going to assume that the viewer has a basic understanding about constraint optimization, differential calculus and a little bit of matrix algebra. Now what we are uh, going to do is, as I said before, we want to minimize the portfolio variance and ideally as a rational investor, we would be pretty happy if uh, there was some way in which the variance could be reduced to zero or totally eliminated. Uh, but for that to happen, we would realize that uh, the return that we are expecting from our portfolio should be the same as our desired return. In other words, the difference between the expected and desired returns should be equal to zero. Now this idea is going to become our first constraint in this optimization problem. And the second constraint in the optimization problem is going to be pretty obvious. That is, we must not allow the portfolio weights to exceed a sum of one. So let me quickly write down these constraints. We have already written down the objective function here and that is to minimize the portfolio variance. Now let me write down the constraints. So we are we have two constraints with which we are going to be working. The first one is uh, the one that deals with um, the difference between the expected and the desired return. So let me write here for all i's varying from 1 to n. Um, what I'm going to write here is my expected return first, which I'm going to write as xi times e. This letter e stands for my expected return. And then I'm going to put a minus sign and then write a letter d, which represents my desired return. So what I'm writing here is that the difference between my expected and desired return should be equal to zero. That is my first constraint. And the second constraint was pretty obvious. We need to ensure that the weights, the portfolio weights that is, should not exceed a sum of 1. So let us write that down quickly here for all i's varying from 1 to n. The portfolio weight which I am representing by letter x should not exceed 1. So all x i's when added together should add up to 1. So I can write this as x i minus 1 should be equal to 0. It is very easy to see that if I take this one on the other side of the equation, it's going to become one. So the sum of all x i's is going to be equal to one. So these are the two constraints that I'm going to work with. Now, if you look, we have three equations here. One equation is uh, represented by our objective function here, and there are two equations representing our constraints. What we are going to do is we are going to combine these three equations into one single function and we are going to call it the Lagrangian function. Let's give a name to that function. Let's call it the y function and that is going to be equal to we are going to uh, combine all these items. So let me pick up the first item that is the portfolio variance. I'm going to copy and paste it at this place and then I'm going to put a plus sign and after the plus sign I'm going to write a Greek letter lambda. This lambda my friends stands for the Lagrangian multiplier and the Lagrangian multipliers are going to be used to represent the uh, constraint items here. So since we have two constraints, we are going to be using two lambdas. This is the first one of them. So let me say that this is the first one by writing in its foot the digit one and inside the bracket, let me uh, copy and paste my first constraint. I'm going to copy this, but as you see, the whole thing has been copied. I only want the left hand side of this function to be copied. So I'm going to paste it here and then I'm going to get rid of the right hand side of the constraint that is the equality sign and the zero. After that, I will put a plus sign again and then I'm going to write my second lambda. Let me do that here because this is going to be my second Lagrangian multiplier which will accommodate my second constraint. So let me write lambda two and then 
I start a bracket and inside that I am going to write down my second constraint. Again the full thing has been copied which I am going to paste here and then I am going to get rid of the equality sign and the 0 so that only the left hand side of the constraint remains inside the bracket. So, this has become my Lagrangian function. What I need to do from here is pretty simple. I need to do two things to get to the global minimum variance. I need to take a partial derivative of the function y with respect to x i and where i could be anything between 1 to n depending on the number of securities that we have in our portfolio. Uh, I am going to set that partial derivative to be equal to 0 and then I am going to take a partial derivative of uh, the y function with respect to the lambda and the lambda is going to be first lambda 1 and then lambda 2 and these two partial derivatives also I am going to going to set to equal to 0 and from there I am going to get a simultaneous uh, equation system uh, linear equation system which I can solve for portfolio weights. So, let me write here what we need to do for you let me invoke a fraction template and what I need to do actually is I need to take the partial derivative of the y function with respect to the x i first. So, let me write that here for you and I am going to have to set this function equal to 0 and I have to say where i can vary from 1 to n depending on the number of securities in the portfolio and then what I need to do next is to take a uh, partial derivative again. So, let me write that partial derivative of the y function with respect to um, the lambda. So, let me write a lambda here and let me write here a lambda j and where I can say lambda j should be varying from 1 to 2 because there are two constraints here. So, let me write where lambda is varying between 1 and 2. So, once I set these functions to be equal to 0 and solve the resulting uh, system of linear equations, I am going to get to my global minimum variance pretty easily. Um, I am going to stop here for the meanwhile because uh, of the time constraint for one uh, single video. Uh, the next time when we meet, we are going to look at how we can proceed ahead with a two security portfolio. You can do it for any um, portfolio with any number of securities, but in the interest of time, we are going to restrict ourselves to a two security portfolio and uh, uh, it is needless to say that once you get the hang of doing it for a two security portfolio, you can do it very easily for a three or a four or a five security portfolio too. So, at the moment, I am going to pause here and till the next time we meet, goodbye, have fun.